Every day, it seems, there's a new headline about ex-owner Elon Musk. He's said to be throttling traffic to websites he dislikes. He's fighting Mark Zuckerberg, or he's not. But a recent crop of editors and publishers have started to pose a provocative question. How much should we ignore Elon Musk? Let's bring in Jessica Lesson, founder and CEO of The Information. Uh, so, Jessica, I, I mean, I guess nobody's forcing us to, to pay attention, but he does now own this very key social platform, very important distribution uh, mechanism for, for news. It's the real-time source of a lot. So how can we uh, properly ignore what he's doing? Well, I think we have to focus here on what's happening with Musk, Inc. versus what he's posting. And I think trying to distract us from Musk, Inc. You know, uh, I guess X's, formerly known as Twitter's revenues, down 50 percent. Tesla's profits taking a haircut because they've got to lower prices. You know, over at SpaceX, the Starship is it got off the launch pad, but, it, you know, it, it ultimately crashed. So. I believe that Musk is out there posting incessantly about pranks and fights and driving to people's houses and and showing off his autopilot on his Tesla because he'd rather we focus on that. I say let's focus on the business. OK, so why is it important for us to focus on the business, which is now privately held and maybe is struggling, yep. maybe is coming back, depending on. I mean, I guess I wonder its role in society and the news ecosystem and how everybody gets information is very relevant as well. Absolutely. And it's a great point, Mike, because as journalists, we do pay probably more attention to this platform than certainly its revenue um, would suggest we should. But X is important. Musk bought it because he believes that it is an important, important town square. Um, and it has huge influence off so many businesses, and including media companies. And so I think we've got to pay attention to what's going there. It also, you know, if, if the financials continue, Musk is going to have to make some moves with his other companies to continue to pay for this thing. So it's an important piece of the business puzzle, but we should certainly put it in context. As Linda Yaccarino told me last week that they were close to break even, and she's brought back a lot of advertisers and named names like Coca-Cola and Anthem. Yeah, Sarah, I think time will tell, right? And, and that is the question. Linda is in there. She's got um, the reputation and relationships to bring people back. But are they going to come back in big dollars? You know, advertisers like to say they're back on the platform to give the CEO a nice press release. I think the numbers will tell whether there's meaningful business to be built. Also, Musk's plan was not just advertising. He said advertising is never going to get this company to where it needs to go. He wants to do subscriptions. He wants to do commerce. So far, both of those are stalled. Right. I mean, it seems at least right now that they have started to charge uh, for TweetDeck. He's doing this thing with, uh, I guess, paying subscribers where maybe he's going to share some ad revenue. I just wonder about the, um, the prospects, not just for X to become the everything app, but for anything to become the everything app in this context. I, I actually, it's a great point. I think the web is fragmenting and, and the days of everything apps are over. But it seems like Musk is out there throwing ideas out there. He's got to get engineers interested. He may have to raise money and get investors interested. So, um, you know, we see that kind of behavior from a lot of CEOs. It, it, really, the devil's going to be in what they build and what they do. And lately, you know, with the report from The Washington Post around throttling traffic to publisher sites that he doesn't like, you know, that doesn't seem like the kind of behavior that's going to get advertisers back on board and to really grow this business.